will accept the peace beyond all my understanding and I I will trust in you, I will trust in you. St. Ignatius in his autobiography, in his humility, never uses the word I. So he keeps talking about himself in third person, he. He was going out of his devotion to a church a little more than a mile from Manresa. The road ran next to the river. As he went along, occupied with his devotions, he sat down for a little while with his face toward the river, which was running deep. While he was seated there, the eyes of his understanding began to be opened. Though he did not see any vision, he understood and knew many things, both spiritual things and matters of faith and of learning. And this was with so great an enlightenment that everything seemed new to him. Though there were many, he cannot set forth the details that he understood then, except that he experienced a great clarity in his understanding. This was such that in the whole course of his life, through 62 years, even if he gathered up all the many helps he had from God and all the many things he knew and added them together, he does not think that they would amount to as much as he had received at that one time. That Cardinal River was like for him hearing the symphony. He heard the symphony, how it all fits together, both spiritual, academic, intellectual, Everything came together for him. Later, as an older Jesuit, uh, when he would putting the constitutions together, and he'd have a, a very fine point dealing with, say, poverty or whatnot, he would see it a particular way. It needed to be just like this. This is how it fit. And, and some of his Jesuit brothers would be, Father Ignatius, how do you see that point so clearly? And his response was, it's the Cardonaire. It's the Cardinal. It fits. It, he had heard the symphony, and he knows how things fit now. And he knows how to pray to see how they fit. So the Ignatian vision is very holistic. It's all interrelated. It's very holistic. Um, hence, one could argue that our charism, and I, I mean, all of you are imbued with this charism too, with a great love of Ignatius. A charism is a particular angle at which you see Jesus. So whether you're following the Benedictine charism and you're seeing him from the middle right over there or the Jesuit, middle left, whatever, do you get the idea we're all following Jesus? It's the same Jesus. It's an authentic, that's how I see Jesus. That's the angle at which I see Jesus. And if Carmelite would see Jesus, you know, maybe right up back the middle or whatever, but it's the same Jesus. So they're all authentic and they are interconnected, but the Ignatian vision is, is exactly this. There are five methods of prayer. They examine. He'll call it the examination of conscience, but they examine meditation, contemplation, vocal and mental prayer to seek to find, to choose God's will for my life. But I can't authentically do that until I let go of the things to which I cling. That is really important because as we come into the election towards the end of the second week, how are we going to respond to this love of God and choose what God has chosen for us? God has a will for us. He has a plan. And he wants to communicate that will to those who are open to receive it with open hands, Marian hands, and are not clinging to things. So he's going to give us methodologies to help us let go of the clinging so that we can receive. When we're making a choice, which is choosing what God has chosen for us, which one will better help us serve the Lord, the Magis? That's very Ignatian. He doesn't talk about the best. He talks about the better. You can serve God in this way, in this way, in this way too. But what's the better way to serve God? We shouldn't be training our kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? Or, well, you can do anything you want, just put your mind to it, now, and God will bless it. It's like, oh no. We're called to discern, how can I better serve God? 
the Holy Spirit will always lead me to the better praise and service of God, and the evil spirit will always lead me towards the lesser. If he can't get me to do something evil, he'll at least lead me towards the lesser, the evil spirit, the enemy of our human nature, St. Ignatius calls him, because human nature is good. And we're made for this service of God, principle and foundation, the praise, reverence, and service of God. That's why we're created. That's why we're constantly being created. Today, we're called to praise, reverence, and serve God. That's our call. That's our fundamental invitation, is to live that relationship. So in summary form, the election is a love response to love. God is love. He has a plan. He has a choice. And I need to receive that love and respond in love. It's a love response to love. In my own life, just to make this concrete, for 26 years, I was trying to get God to come to my way of seeing things. Because <laughs> I had a great plan. He just needed to understand my wonderful plan. And it wasn't until I allowed myself to be profoundly loved on one of my silent retreats that I was realizing, you are amazing. How can I better, Majis, respond to your love? And it, be, it just like washed over me and it's been the same ever since. It was as a religious, huh? living this life of poverty, chastity, and obedience. Eventually as a priest too. But it was a love response to love. That is really key. For any election, it's a love response to love. Until I allow myself to be deeply loved, which will allow me to let go of those things to which I cling. Because I get certain security. I wouldn't cling to them unless I got a certain security out of those things. I need to know that I'm deeply loved. We're created for a purpose, to praise God our Lord and the salvation of my soul. Whatever I choose in life, whether a major choice in life, a vowed choice in life, or a simple choice about whether I should leave St. Louis if I need to move, whether we should have another child, whether um, I should let go of this job and consider another, whether I should retire now. Well, the answer is, what's the magis for you? That's going to answer all, even the particulars of, of your questions. But you have to, you have to reorder yourself, St. Ignatius says. Remember what your purpose is, to praise, reverence, and serve God. What means would best help you towards that end? But you have to have your end in mind. He says commonly, 500 years ago, people choose the means instead of the end. They choose the steps towards the goal as their ultimate goal, the steps, the, the means instead of the end. In other words, he says they, they'll choose, like, like in the vowed life, they would choose marriage. I want to get married. And secondarily, I want to serve God in that marriage. No, no, no. Backwards. We've got to keep order here. We've got to do this for the love of God. What does God want? I'm called to praise and serve God. I'm not called to get married. Everyone's called to get married and then secondarily to praise God. Oh, no. Marriage is a lovely gift and a beautiful attraction for all of us. But that doesn't answer, that doesn't mean you're called to it because you're attracted to it. Huh? Marriage is rooted in the natural order. What does God want from me, though? That's the, the fundamental Ignatian disposition, to receive God's will as gift. That's the prelude for making an election. I've got to have that Ignatian, what he calls indifference. Indifference is the heart of love for Ignatius. It's obviously not secular indifference. I think you probably know this. It's not I don't care indifference. I wish we could maybe come up with a different word, but anyway, for him, indifference is the heart of love. It means openness. I can be moved in any direction. I'm truly disponible. We need to get that word back into English. Disponible, open. I can be molded. I, I present myself as clay, soft clay, for God to mold as God would wish. God's a pretty good potter, you know, but I have to provide soft clay. The problem is I'm pretty lumpy, and I got some hardness, and I'm like, I want to be this kind of clay, you know. I want to be made into this kind of a jar, you know. Receiving your grace, Lord. And he has, he has bigger plans than mine. And I have to receive those as a gift. Indifference is the heart of love for Ignatius. I hope all of your kids can tell their kids, I put my life on the altar and I let God choose what he wanted for me. I didn't choose marriage. God chose it for me. I didn't choose religious life, if they're called to that. God chose it for me. And from this point on, I choose what God chooses for me. That's a person in love. That's a person who's making a good election. This is God's decision. This is God electing us, and we choose what God has chosen for us. Okay, I'm repeating this several different ways. I realize that, but trying to drive it home. <laughs> Our God is a choosing God for Ignatius. He loves to choose people. He chooses companions. He wants us to join, it, join him. He wants to show us what it is to begin this new life. He wants, 
It's amazing our God does choose disciples and companions. He could have redeemed the world by himself. Why does he choose these intimate companions, you and me also, uh, in this task? And when in consolation I am moved in a certain direction, which is different than pondering, doing this life, and seeing if it fits me or not. We don't initiate. We don't come up with, I'd like to think of myself doing this way or this way. Mm. Oh, I find more consolation doing this way. That's initiated by us, not by God. And in the election, we have to be more receptive than that. When the morning sun defeats the darkest night I will hope in you, Lord, I will hope in you And when the sparrow flies and the flower blooms I will hope in you, Lord, I will hope in you I will accept the peace beyond Oh, my understanding And I will find you there I will trust in you I will trust in you When the evening comes And the madness fades I will look to you, Lord, I will look to you. And when the setting sun sheds its final light, I will look for you, Lord, I will look for you. I will accept the peace beyond. Oh, my understanding, I will find you there I will trust in you I will trust in you close my eyes I will rest in you Lord I will rest in you I will rest in you Lord I will rest in you